Today is the start of a project that I've wanted to do for some time, and that is to make a radio-controlled 3D Benchy. Now, obviously, getting all of the running gear into a Benchy of this size is going to be a bit of a challenge. However, I do have a solution for that. A little while ago, Quiddy sent me their XMAX 3 3D printer to take a look at, and I actually made a review of that on this channel, and we're going to be using that to make a Benchy not of this size, but instead of this size. Then what we're going to do is try and cram in all of the running gear that we need to make it as a radio control boat and then share with you the outcome. Now this is going to be a two-part video. Today's video we're going to concentrate on what we need to do to actually use the model, scale it up, 3D print it and then take a look at the hardware that we're going to use to make it actually work and then in part two we're going to be looking at the final outcome and then getting it on the water. Now, if you're interested in seeing the review for the XMAX 3, there will be a link to that in this video. This video would not have been possible without the support of Quiddy. And if you're interested in seeing what that printer can do, please do consider checking it out. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need to do is take a look at the model and start to modify it. However, there is one big problem before we even do that. And that is the 3D Benchy doesn't actually float. This design, as you see it here, whilst it looks good, it doesn't float and we're going to need to select an alternative model. Now, luckily, there is already a solution to this. There is a model called Ben, the floating benchmark Benchy, which is an alternative design of a Benchy that does actually float. Now, this is very similar to the original one, but it does have some key differences. That does mean it will float as a model. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is modify the model before we scale it up to the size we need. Now, I'm no 3D design expert. I'm not very good with CAD. I can fumble my way through most things. And the first idea that I had was to maybe split the model in half and then try looking to see if that would do it. Now, the Quiddy Slicer does have a feature for this. So you can click the little scissors here. We can then adjust the position of the line and I sort of had an idea of do we sort of split the hull there into two separate parts that leaves us a top section and a bottom section unfortunately though if you look at that it doesn't give us any room to put the electronics in there's nowhere for the motor to go so this really isn't going to be the right solution next I brought the model into 123 design now you might be wondering why I'm using such an old program that isn't available anymore well frankly it's a program that I'm used to using I simply haven't been able to get comfortable with the likes of AutoCAD the likes of FreeCAD or even Tinkercad. 123Design is a program that I'm actually used to using. I can pretty much do everything that I would want to usually do with it. So this was my starting point for the modification. Now to do this, what I would simply do is start adding in blocks onto the model. So we'd say place it on the top there, move it to where I would want it within the model. So say for instance, I can place that there. And then I would use the ability to subtract one part from the other. So if we select the model, select the part, hit enter, and that will allow me to start removing parts of the model and hollowing out the boat to, to create a design that will allow me to be able to put in the electronic running gear. There you can see by doing that I was able to remove a part of the boat and what I ended up with was this. This is my hollowed out Ben Benchy hull. You can see that I've taken the whole top section off, moved it down into several different sections inside and then left the overall hull as it was. This will form the basis for the boat and then what I'm going to do later is rebuild the top end once I've got all of the running gear in and figured out how it all behaves. Okay, so I've brought the model into Quiddy Slicer and as you can see, it's sitting in the middle. Now, the first thing we're going to need to do is scale this up. Now, this is quite a big build plate. We've got 330 on this, but we're going to use a scaling factor to bring it up to a larger size. So I'm just going to click that and what I want to do is go to as big as I can go on this plate, but on a number I'm going to remember. So I'm going to set it to 500. That is still within the bounds of the build plate. I can tell this, for instance, so if I click on it and just do it manually a minute, and if I scale it, you can see if I go too big, it goes red, which means you're not able to print that. If I scroll down, about the largest I can go is 5, 540, 530 on the scale factor. So what I'm going to do is set it to 500. That way it's a number that I'll remember in this video for when I start doing the top section. We're not maxing out the build volume, but we do still have a little bit of space either side, but it certainly should be big enough. 
Now, we're not going to need any supports on this. We're not going to have to worry about that. But we now obviously have to set up our print settings for this. And there are a few things I'm going to check along the way. So the first thing we're going to do is what system preset do we want to use, i.e. what layer height do we want to use for this printer. Now, I'm going to use 0.25 for this model. I don't feel I need to go down any smaller for a model of this scale. This isn't about quality. This is going to be a functional part. So 0.25 quick should give me a decent result for this 3D print. We're then going to select generic PLA for the filament. We don't want any supports on this and the infill is set to 15% as it is there. I think that's going to be fine. I don't think we're going to have any problems with that at all. So if we just slice that a minute and have a look at what sort of time scale we're looking at, that has come out at six hours and 48 minutes. So that's a seven hour print. We are getting a bit of a warning down here, stability issues, uh, Benchy base STL overhang. Ah, and we've also got this bit on the back here as well. So we might actually need to do some supports on this, actually. Let's just see. Build plate only. And let's re-slice that and just see what it thinks. Oh, God, we don't... Uh, okay. It is asking for supports all the way around. I'm a little surprised it wants that much on the supports. And that's changed it up to nine hours and six minutes. Um... I'm inclined that I wouldn't usually use support on a benchy like that. However, something I do want to just check is because we have scaled this up, the effect of these overhangs, what they actually step out like. You can see the blue areas. It's warning us. Let's just get in a bit closer. I'm not convinced I need supports on that. I think I'm definitely going to need supports on this. So I think what we'll do is we'll add a support enforcer on the back here. Um, just so we can make sure that that is specifically catered for. So let's just scale up our box. And then just get that there. That should be fine. Let's run that again. Support forces only. There we go. That's putting a little bit on the back. A bit more than I would like still. I'm probably going to tweak that a little bit just to get that a bit smaller. We don't need all of this around this edge here. It's simply because of the way I've done the box. Again, when you're doing supports, there, there is a bit of a game to be had on getting it just right and not wasting support material for no good reason. Let's just do that again. There we go. That's much closer to what I'm expecting. That's down at 7 hours and 12 minutes, so that's added very little to the build. Now, we are at the stage of risking around here where it says the overhangs are quite large. However, I'm going to risk that. I don't think we need supports on that. I think we will be fine. And I'll let it do that on the bottom there as well. I think we'll get away with that one in the print. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with where we're at on this. And we're going to get ready to print it. Now, looking down, it says it's going to take 7 hours and 12 minutes, which is fine. And it's going to use 349 grams of filament, which is a third of a spool. I'm going to use a brand new spool of high-speed PLA. And that's what we're going to take a look at next. Now, for this print today, we're going to be using one of Eason's new EPLA HF filaments. Now, this filament is specifically designed for high-speed printers. The modern range, such as the Bamboos, as well as the Quiddy X Max 3, like we're using here today. And really, more than anything, this filament is going to hopefully give you the best possible results from your printer. You don't need high speed filaments for any of these fast printers. However, there are some tweaks to the makeup that they've made that just should help improve the overall quality. Now, this spool is still sealed. What I'm going to actually do is dry this out before I use it, although it does come with the silica gel inside. I'm going to dry it just to make sure we get the best possible results. What's nice is they do show you on the front here the diameter, which is the net weight, the temperature, 
temperature, the bed temp and the recommended fan speeds and I'll check that compared to the profile we have on the printer in a minute. Now, as I mentioned at the start, to print this today, we're going to be using the Quiddy X Max 3. This is one of the larger Core XY 3D printers available on the market. It not only prints big, but it prints fast as well, being based off Clipper. It has a 300 by 300 build volume on the bed, which means we're going to have no problems getting this model on. And as you can see here, it allows us to scale things up on a massive level. And as I did say earlier, I do have a review on this printer where we not only printed a big benchy, but we did some helmets and stuff as well and if you're interested in seeing that there will be a link to it in the description. So once the file was sliced it was time to get it onto the printer, make sure everything was correct, start the print and let it do its thing. Okay, so the full print is complete. You can see it there. We'll get it off the bed in a minute and take a closer look. I'm not expecting it to be 100% perfect because this is a scaled up version of the small model. There will be imperfections as a result of that. Just showing you it from above. You can see inside there. Took, what was that? Seven hours and 16 minutes. So overall, the Quiddy did a fantastic job. Time to get it off the bed and have a closer look. Okay, now just to show you the size of the print on the build plate there, if I just get you another benchy and place it on top, or at least a part benchy, it gives you an idea of just how much we have scaled this print up compared to what it originally was. Now to remove this off the build plate should be nice and easy. It should just be a, there we go, a peel just like that. We can take a look at the bottom. There's no writing on the bottom of this one. Overall, the bottom layer looks nice. We'll go on the overhead in a minute so you can have a look. We've got the supports on the back. So we'll get them off and just take a look at overall how it's come out. Now, as I mentioned earlier, this isn't designed to be an out and out perfect print because this is a scaled up model and as a result of that there are going to be artifacts as a result of the increased scaling size if we take a look around obviously we've got the support on the back around the right in so let's give that a pull that come off nicely there you can see ben i call it benji but it's actually ben and you can see that there if we take a look inside first of all Top layer, a little bit rough there at times. I didn't do any tweaks to the design and it is also worth remembering this is all modified. This isn't as, as it comes normally, so it has been changed. The original layers all look good. Top layer looks really nice. If we have a look around the sides where it wanted me to use um, support that I didn't, no loose filament, you can see a little bit stringy there because I didn't use any form of support on that, but that's come out good. And again, the same around the hole, pretty pleased with that. There is that hull line, does always appear on these benches and you can actually see the effect of that scaling up. If I just do it there, can you see the effect of that? And then you've got a slight difference in color on the bottom, again, because of the temperature difference on the filament. And then the bow comes up. A couple of little dots there where we've got the retraction points. But overall, I'm really pleased with how that's come out. No complaints from me whatsoever. And it's ready to begin the project of creating a radio control benchy. 
Okay, now with regards to the running gear on this boat, you've got what we can see here. I went with a four inch shaft. I went with a proper brass propeller. We've got our coupler and then we've got our motor. Now it is a four pole, 3650 to 3900 kV. Not sure if I've picked the right motor here. It's a waterproof motor by a company's name I can't even pronounce. Feels big, feels heavy. Hopefully it'll do the job. I pretty much clicked on the first thing I saw on the website and ordered it. So what we're gonna do is get this fitted. I'm gonna have to 3D print a bracket for this motor as well, and then get it into the boat. Okay, now just to show you how far we have got, we have the motor installed, the prop shaft, the running gear, we have the rudder on the back. I've put it to the side there, I'll explain a bit more why in a minute, and I've been doing some tests with it as well. Now, as you can see, we've got the motor installed. I downloaded this 3D printed motor mount, which is perfect for this application. I will put a link to that in the description if you need one. You then have obviously that held in place. We've got our coupler and then our prop shaft going down there. I've basically just used hot glue to hold the prop shaft in place. That then comes out of the back and then we've got the prop installed. There's more length there than I would like coming off the back of the boat, but there's not a lot I can really do about that. As a result of that, I decided to install the rudder to the side. I have no idea how well that's going to work. I could have made a much longer bracket and placed it over here, but I decided to instead create another little 3D printed bracket on the back there and then that's bolted through on the inside and then we'll mount a servo. It needs a little bit of tightening, probably a bit of glue as well and then hold that in place. Now the motor mount was glued down and then there's four screws been put in just to hold it. It's fine. I think that'll be okay. That black stuff you can see inside isn't actually black it's some silicon grease i put some in the motor coupler here just to try and lubricate it a bit and obviously when i fired the motor up it just threw it everywhere so that's just something i need to tidy now one thing i will say is i think i've completely overdone this with regards to the motor i just picked the first one that i seen and it is way too powerful or at least the kv is way too high there wasn't really a lot of other options that i came across when I was looking so I just went that'll do but having done some testing and this motor will work sort of 6 to 12 volt I can only test it with 12 volt on this ESC because it doesn't work on lower voltages I could go down to about 8 volt but it doesn't like it but just to demo this for instance if I just power this on with a 3s battery and just give you an idea of the kind of power that we have again we've got the radio master receiver there we're just going to place that to the side I've got the throttle set up just to give you an idea I think it's going to be a speed benchy at this point. I've only got half throttle there set up on this at the moment. I've actually completely redone the profile to prevent any higher speeds from that. However, this thing is definitely going to move. I'm probably going to go with a 6 volt battery. Obviously, I'm going to need to order a proper ESC, and that obviously should then slow things down. What you can actually see is the coupler starts to spin open when we get up to those speeds, so it's far from ideal. Now that is pretty much where I'm going to leave it here today. In part two, we're going to be getting it into the water to see if it even floats. We'll be doing some basic testing and then we'll get all the other 3D prints finished and hopefully show you the results of this project. Now, I want to say a massive thank you to Quiddy for sending over that X Max 3 to take a look at. As I have mentioned several times already, there will be a link to that printer, but also a link to my review on it in the description as well. I'll put a link to this 3D Ben model. I keep calling it Benchy, but it is 3D Ben, the one that actually floats, if you're interested in that as well. Please do make sure you are subscribed if you want to 
to watch the second part of this video. And finally, I just want to say a massive thank you to all of my Patreons. I would not be able to have done this project without their support. It was the Patreon support that allowed me to buy the motors, the components on this boat. And if you're interested in supporting us to see more content like this in the future, please do consider checking it out. Anyway, that's it from me on this one. Stay safe. I will speak to you soon.